Welcome to Turning Hard Times to Good Times. I'm your host, Jay Taylor, speaking to you from the borough of Queens in New York City. It is the 16th day of August 2022. We do want to thank our sponsors, make this show economically viable. Today's sponsors, Irving Resources, Noble Resources, El Oro Resources, SK Mining, Timberline Resources, and Lion One Metals. I've titled today's show, Navigating the Fourth Turning. Doug Casey, Michael Spreadborough, and Michael Oliver return as our guests. Doug Casey is an international man, having lived in various countries and traveling actively around the world. He is a free-thinking intellectual and a very successful entrepreneur. He has talked about the fourth turning in the past on this show, so we're looking to get an update from him on that topic uh, today. But now, as the as this fourth current turning evolves from theory into something very unpleasant, as it turns uh, the removal of uh, such things as the removal of our rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness toward a life seemingly destined for slavery and service to the state, we need to be concerned about what might lie ahead of us as investors and citizens. Fourth turnings don't have to be bad. They can be good, like the American Revolution that was based on freeing the colonists from the tyranny of King George. But fourth turnings, like the French Revolution, can be downright evil depriving people of their freedom to speak out against their governments and to engage in religious practices of their choosing, if they so choose, or not to do so, if they so choose. But now the direction of this current fourth turning does not look particularly promising. We have seen the Biden administration working with private corporations to silence free speech when ideas expressed do not agree with theirs. The removal of our First Amendment rights is a very dangerous precedent in America, and it is a trend that is spreading around the Western world like wildfire. I'm looking forward to what Doug Casey has to say uh, about where he thinks this political movement is taking us and how we should prepare for it. Doug will be with me in the second half of today's show. One thing we know for sure is that gold prevails as money, while the use of fiat currency issued by dictators like Stalin, Hitler, Mao, Pol Pot all enter the dustbins of history along with those tyrants. But gold always survives them as money. Michael Spreadborough will join me in the second segment of today's show to update us on Noble Resources, that, that company's latest efforts to discover more gold in Western Australia and to return to producing the world's monetary metal once again from its Beaton's Creek gold mine in Western Australia. But right now I'm happy to tell you that Michael Oliver is with me to share his latest thoughts on the markets and all the crazy stuff that's swirling around right now. And I should say, before I say hello to Michael, you need to go to OliverMSA.com, OliverMSA.com, to sign up for his excellent newsletter, Momentum and Structural Analysis. Um, it's really been a great one for me, and I know a lot of other people have benefited greatly from it as well. Michael, thank you so much for joining me. Good to be back, Jay. It's always good to have you, and uh, boy, especially at times like this when there's so much craziness going on, uh, you sent something out It was – Pretty interesting uh, comment. You said, what a crock of status BS. Who cares about the secrets of the almighty state? Fine. Like I know where the Pope keeps his underwear now. Who cares? It's all crumbling anyway. After due time to prove its lack of Darwinian viability. And as much as I think Trump is a pile of SHIPU, he has at least served an historical role in dividing what should have occurred already. Let it rip. On the other side, in a decade, we'll be positive. And not just here, but in China and Europe, where natural divorce from what is will also evolve and unfold. End of quote. Well, that's some remark, Michael. I mean, I, I must say, you always uh, express yourself in colorful terms, which is one of the reasons we like to have you here. But it's not only quite a remark, it also ends on an optimistic tone. And sometimes it's kind of hard to see the optimism when we see so much darkness that seems to be going on now. So how do you how do you come to this idea that things are going to get better? Well, uh, rather than talk about markets and technicals this time, I, I'd like to venture into that broader area you mentioned. Uh, uh -huh. First of all, my background, I'm a libertarian, okay? I'm not a conservative. Yes. I used to be when I was in high school, back when Goldwater was around, but I evolved uh -huh. to libertarianism because of influence of Ayn Rand. She was not actually a libertarian. She was limited government, but... Her basic philosophy influenced my life, and I wrote a book uniting her philosophy with Murray Rothbard's mm -hmm. economics, and he was a 
father of modern libertarianism, free market capitalism, non-statist society. That book mm-hmm. was written 50 years ago, and I can't believe that I'm actually going to live to see, I think, the culmination of the trend in that direction. But I think mm-hmm. we're living in part three of Atlas Shrugged right now. And, and by that, I mean, in that part of the book, that's when the events surrounding the specifics of the book, uh, macro trend events, like we had, they was in, the, in part three, there was a supply chain breakdown in society. Whoa. Mm-hmm. There was a shortage of key commodities. The government engaged in wartime powers, like they did with baby food recently, in order to su- uh-huh. supposedly fix supply problems. I mean, there's so many mm-hmm. events that uh, that Rand in 1957, when she wrote the book, was correct about. And it took a while for these events to coalesce and, and generate their their negatives. And finally, their their solution. I think because if you have a negative trend or negative thought, reality is going to smack you. Now, it may mm-hmm. take a while, but I think we're getting smacked now. And a lot of mm-hmm. false assumptions about governments and so forth are, are getting their due uh, response. And it's mm-hmm. not just one side, it's both sides. So I, I stand as a neutral observer, really, when it comes to the two sides that are now conflicting. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, I view Trump as, as an agent of history in a sense that, though I don't like his policies, he increased government spending like crazy. He yes. told the Fed to print money to go to zero mm-hmm. interest rates. I mean, this is not right. free market, okay? But he has created a division that could help bring about a rethinking, a redoing because of fracturing of what what has been. And uh, to that extent, I have to tip my hat to him. And I think we're we're in that process. So don't just look at the financial markets as, as the the be-all and end-all of what you've got to pay attention to here. There's social impacts. There's going to be political impacts. I mean, just pause and think. Now, I'm, I'm saying this as, as a futurist, let's say, not as a mm-hmm. an advocate. But I, I mm-hmm. can see all kinds of outcomes occurring. And again, I'm not advocating them, but I think they could occur. Uh, imagine this. Trump gets the nomination, and he wins. Can you mm-hmm. imagine the response on the other side? No, the it's hard. To, well, would occur. I okay. think, or, yeah, yeah. or Trump loses. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine the response on his side? Mm-hmm. I mean, there's no Same outcome thing. here that is uh, benign. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Anyway, that we, we face a a bubble event in the markets that is likely to help exacerbate this, and that is we've had a stock market bubble we've never seen before of the size. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's yes. uh, you know, 16-fold increase in the NASDAQ, 7-fold in the S&P. They're coming undone. And the biggest bubble in history. So these will have wave effects as well. So broaden your horizon. Realize the next few years could be very tumultuous, not just in the markets, but there's likely a beneficial outcome because it will cause a massive rethink about the mm-hmm. validity of statism, uh, mm-hmm. no matter which variant you want to pursue. Okay, So I'm sort of mm-hmm. happy with the events that are occurring. I think they'll ultimately lead to a positive outcome. Yeah. Well, I, I do note that you've been thinking along these lines for a number of years, I think, and I believe that you um, chose to live somewhere where it was a little bit less populated. Uh, is that part of the thinking that some people might want to consider? <laughs> I think a lot of people have done that in the last couple of years. And that's why we had the uh, massive movement of, of people of wealth, particularly from very large cities to uh, p- places like Montana and Utah and Florida and Texas and so forth. <laughs> so, um, mm-hmm. But that wave, yeah. I think, has already occurred. So, But, uh, yes, I, I think mm-hmm. that a lot of things like that could happen that are correlated to what I've just been talking about but seemingly disconnected, but they're all connected. Because I think we're, we're mm-hmm. entering a giant philosophical and political and uh, social turmoil, which will have a good outcome. Well, Michael, and, well, Michael, everybody's going to need to try to keep warm. And, you know, the, the basic needs of life, oil and food, like energy, uh, number one, I would say uh, food, number one, energy, number two, how do those markets look to you? Very bullish, I guess. It looks I suppose to me like they the still are. Leg up in the, yeah, the, I think that the focus on gasoline, which of course you know one side is pounding the table about their great success and bringing it. To, if, if even if it just lingers up here, it chokes people. Okay, 
If oil yeah. hangs around yeah. between 80, 90, and 100, it's like double, triple where it was a couple years ago. So it doesn't really matter whether it's pulled back. It's whether it just holds up here. Watch natural gas. It's making a move on its mm-hmm. eyes again. That's far more crucial to the world and to mm-hmm. economic outcome. Watch the food commodities, things like sugar that nobody's looking at. Watch the meats. They're pressing up very strongly. Uh, and also watch the new crop grains. Now, new crop grains are well priced below the old crop grains. Why? Because you harvest a crop, and therefore it's a lower price. You've got more of it available. But uh, they look technically ripe to turn up, uh, like watch November beans, uh, December wheat, and so forth. I think that's where you're going to get the next leadership in the commodity boom is not from the things that everybody's been watching, like oil and, and gasoline. It's instead mm-hmm. going to be natural gas and the food commodities. And that will have a right. great impact. All right. And gold is holding its own. It doesn't go it's anywhere, but at least it's not well, losing. And I'm still focused on silver as the likely most massive positive outcome of the next couple of years. But they will both move together, but silver, but it, both silver in a bull market, but silver usually, right. Yeah, Normally that's what happens. Yeah. Yep. All right, Michael, we'll have to leave it go at that. We're out of time. Thank you so much for your insights. Always appreciated. And all the best to you and to yours. 